this uh, Dominican girl, she left me for a white guy that was 60 years old. And he wasn't like an attractive guy either. Only because her family was like, oh, you need to refinar la familia. And her grandma was very racist. Like her grandma's darker than me. There's not many places out there for black men that folks really, really deal with. But there are some that a lot of brothers go to. You got Colombia, there's Panama, there's Thailand, which is becoming quite popular. There's Brazil. But one of the best places is Dominican Republic. Why is that? It's very close to the United States, so it's cheap to get there. Number two, the cost of living is also cheap. The weather is good, and as we know, the women are extremely beautiful. So again, in the Dominican Republic, some people are trying to improve the race. And this is exactly what this particular brother said. So in Latin America, there's different terms. Um, there's mejora la raza, um, blanqueamiento, which is like whitening, uh, refinar la familia, which is to refine the family, meaning that, you know, my family becomes more refined the wider it gets. And I've heard a lot of these terms and it's nuts. And it's nuts. Um, you know, uh, queremos que los niños salen blanco, bonito, refinado, you know, stuff like that. Like where they'll, or they'll say different things like that. And this is not like everybody, like, but there are some po small pockets in these countries that, that uh, think like this. Brother notices a pattern going on in the DR between, you know, American white men and European white men. What is it that he notices? Like typically white guys from the United States really don't treat their women that bad from what I've seen overseas. Like the white guys from the U.S. are pretty chill. It's just a lot of the guys from Europe that are a little bit more... Uh, uh, misogynistic and very aggressive and try to abuse the women and by abuse I mean like little abuse not that you know I'm not I'm not trying to be a well some guys go oh, you being simp this and that I'm talking about guys that murder these girls and kick their face in for no reason and do all types of things like urinate on them and all this that's what I mean by abuse so I'm not I'm not trying to be like oh you know I'm giving these girls the benefit of the doubt like no some of these guys are really you know uh whooping some and I actually lived next to a white guy that used to do that. We used to call him Willie Whoop. We had to call the police on him because he was he was just he was gonna kill this girl. He notices that the European white guys are more likely to become deadbeat dads and abusers of Dominican women in comparison to American men, white or black American. But he talks about a story in particular in which an African American man wanted to get with this Dominican woman. He talks about this particular situation where a Dominican woman was pressured into getting with a white man. Now, fortunately, that relationship didn't work out and that lady did end up having a kid with him. She ended up getting with a black guy. And this happened. A friend of mine, her um, one of her friends who became a working girl. She didn't She didn't start out that way. But uh, there was this girl who she was married to a white guy and she was married to this white guy because her family really pressured her. You got to get with a white man. You got to get with a white man. You have to you know, better our family. You have to better the race. And like they really put a lot of pressure on her and this guy was not good for her. But they didn't care about that. They cared about skin color. Like they really pressured this into her head. And he, he used to beat this girl so bad. White guy uh, from Europe. Um, so this guy used to really beat this girl, did all types of stuff. One day he kicked her out, burned her clothes and stuff like that. Cause he really wanted to treat the girl like a slave. And the girl was uh, sleeping in the park with her baby and stuff like that. And my, my friend, uh, Jamie decided to take the girl in, but she was afraid to tell her family because her family really wanted her to be with a white man. Like she, she had to be with a white man. Like they really pressured her into, you know, you gotta be with a white man. Like th they had pressured her for years. Like you gotta get with a white man, this and that. So, you know, uh, to feed herself and her kid, uh, you know, she starts working the streets and stuff like that and finding clients. She eventually gets with a, a, a black guy and the black guy is really, you know, taking care of her you know, uh, to the point where he's trying to get her, uh, back on track, you know, cause she had already graduated high school, trying to get her in college, put her in a nice apartment, you know, making sure, you know, 
her and her son have health care. I mean, just complete 180. Um, and she never took the black guy to her family's place because they lived in another another town. And the guy kept asking and asking and asking and like it started straining the relationship, but she was just really scared to bring a black guy home. And Jamie, she got very upset with her one day. And, you know, she told her about the girl about herself. She was like, I remember when I found you in the park and, you know, you and your kid didn't have anything to eat and, you know, I, you know, I took care of you and you finally found a good man and you won't even, you know, you, you should tell your family to go themselves basically because the guy the white guy that you were with was really kicking your ass and almost killed you and you wouldn't even press charges against the guy because he was white that your family wanted you to be with a white guy and this this and that you won't even tell your your family that you know you've broken up with the guy but the you know the black guy um uh, you know the black guy uh you know basically saved your life so did you understand that she got with the black dude and she was afraid to take this guy home to the family. Now she was on the street. She was selling that, you know what? It was going down, but hey, couldn't take the brother home to meet the family, right? Now this brother also lost his woman to an older white man. Check out his story. This uh, Dominican girl, she left me for a white guy that was 60 years old. And he wasn't like an attractive guy either. Only because her family was like, oh, you need to refinar la familia. And you know, her grandma was very racist. Like her grandma's darker than me. But like this woman wouldn't shake my hand. She would never speak to me. Uh, and, you know, it was, I was glad I got out of that situation. Uh, because she, after she married the guy, she found out that, you know, you know, white man's ice is not colder. And, you know, she was not in a situation that she thought she would be in because like her family's like, oh, your life is going to change if you get with a white man and have babies with him. And she had a kid with him and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I told her like, no, you got exactly what you wanted. You got what your family wanted. Now you have, you know, quote unquote, white grandchildren. They said they're beautiful because they're white. I'm like, like your family's black. Like your grandparents are black. Now that lady is doing bad herself. Now, let me just say this. I've heard a myriad of stories from a lot of the black men that, you know, at least um, date or work in the DR. And of course, this is not every Dominican lady. This is not every Dominican family. Um, shout out to Ronan the Traveler. I love listening to that brother's stories. Hopefully I'll get an interview with him pretty soon and work with him. Not every Dominican uh, thinks like that, but it is something that I will talk about. I've noticed that a lot of black men are discriminated against outside of america i mean i'm even here in africa and it rarely happens to me here but i have seen instances where i'm in a restaurant a white person can come after me they can get served first um i've seen that happen in, when i was in south africa and it's not as bad as it would be in the dr but you know this is what happens man a lot of these ladies think that the white man's ice is colder and guess what these women get get abused by these dudes. You know, I'm talking about just getting clapped up and, you know, letting their friends clap them up and all of that. And then they have a baby and their family is saying, well, hey, listen, this white guy is going to treat you better. He's going to do this and that. And you know what? That's not always true. I've I've seen some cases here, you know, in, in, in Africa where, you know, like I said, it's not always the case, but. You know, I talked to girls, they date a white guy before and, you know, they're asking for very strange sexual favors. They're asking for a crazy thing. And they're like, you know what? I thought that, you know, dating this person from another community would be better for me. And it's just not the case. And you know what? The whole world needs to wake up from that situation. Just because that person is white or Asian or even whatever the case may be, I don't mean that that person is going to be better than you. But I thought that was very interesting, man. Go ahead and check out Jamie, the pro expat. Um, it's a really good channel. A lot of information going on for black men going on DR. So check him out. Let him know that O'Shea sent you. And as you know, the buffoon remains at all time high. I'm out.